Hey guys, how's it going? Another episode of Bodies and Wicks. First of all, I want to preface this by saying, um, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not here to, uh, you know, I'm not licensed, I guess you could say. You know, I'm just here to uh, do this for educational purposes and educational purposes only. I am not a professional trader. Um, nor do I nor do I really want to be. Um, actually, I do want to be. I'm not going to lie. Who doesn't want to be a professional trader? Um, but uh, what I'm doing is I'm not going to try to tell you what to do with your money. Um, you you know, I, I'm just simply here to uh, give you advice from what I have learned and uh, along the way and simply pass it on to you. Um, today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a review of a free signal service that's out there for Forex. Um, this is a foreign exchange market. Um, that free signal service is called Clean Pips. Now, anybody can join this service. It is free to the public. Um, there's a simple uh, Telegram group out there, and they will provide signals. Those signals will tell you uh, when to buy, what to buy, at what price. Um, they'll give multiple take profit levels, sometimes one. And uh, what I did is I took a whole week uh, of their signals. Right, just this past week, that would be July 13th through the 17th, um, or 16th, I forgot which day it is, um, but Monday through Friday, um, Sunday if they if they did give signals, but they didn't give any signals on Sunday, um, and uh, what I did is I used anything that had a three, uh, three tier take profit level, so if they had a take profit one, two, three, what I did is I had placed three trades, or you know, retroactively pl placed three trades, um, and uh, each of those trades is going to have um, a 0.1 lot size. Right? Uh, if they did one that had two take profit levels, I'm going to do a point to take two trades with a 0.2 lot size. And uh, if they did one trade, then I'm just going to do uh, that one, or if they did one take profit level, I'm going to do one trade with 0.3 lot size. And then um, I'll compare what they communicated with to us as a group along the way by going through the Telegram channel. And then I will calculate uh, what the profit loss is at the end of the week. <clears throat> so. Um, now that being said, Clean Pips um, does what they do say is that they are 97% accurate, um, and uh, we will find out by going through this if they are 97% accurate or not. All right. So first, what I want to do is uh, show you the Telegram channel, go through these trades. All right. So uh, this is the beginning of the week, July 13th. Um, they start off with a well. They start off with something that was happening last week, so we're not. We're just going to ignore that. First, I start off with a um, NZDJPY sell. I'm not going to read off all the numbers, but uh, you guys get the point. Uh, GPB odd uh, buy, uh, Euro JPY sell, uh, GPB NZD buy. Uh, here they're giving us some updates. I feel like there was more on that. I feel like there was four trades. NZD JPY, GPB odd, Euro JPY, GPB NZD. Yeah, so there's four trades on July 13th. July 14th, we have odd USD sell, Euro CAD sell, and a GPB USD sell. Um, on the 15th, we had a buy on GPB odd and a buy on GPB NZD. On the 16th we had buy on UCAD and the 17th we had a buy on GPB AUD again and a sell on USD CAD. So there's a couple in here that have uh, multiple um, multiple uh, positions which I find interesting. Um, and you'll definitely see why I'll find that interesting. Um, <clears throat> and then there's uh, a, a couple that you know are, are kind of curious and 
at, as a trader, you you would look at these and um, you know basically I'm going to go by exactly what they tell me. I'm not going to go by what my instinct would tell me to do because my instinct will tell me to do certain things, especially if I'm seeing multiple trades uh, come in for the same uh, pair um, with different stop losses. Um, you know, I'm very minimal risk person, so if I see, uh, you know, a trade come in later that has a less stop loss of a trade that came in before that that has more of a stop loss, my brain is automatically going to think, oh, I should probably raise the stop loss if they think that that's not going to get that low, and if they think it's going to, you know, hit a profit level. Um, maybe they're thinking in a different way than I am, and uh, that's just me. But we're going to go through these trades, and uh, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So let's go ahead and get at these. This may not be the first one. I don't believe it is. No. So the first one they called out was this uh, NZDJPY. Um, here, they actually hit, did hit the first uh, target. They hit the first take profit. Um, and I believe it was uh, 34 pips. We're working on take profit too, and this is uh, this was called out Monday of the week, right? So the entire week, um, this 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 trade call that they made has uh, still been in consolidation um, the entire time, and I'm looking at this at a 15 minute time frame. Uh, I may have to change this to a little bit more to like an hour um, to give you like a little bit better idea of how this is. Whoa, and of course. Sometimes I don't know why it does this, but it does do this. And let's just hope all of this is saved, because I am going to have to... Hold on, I think I know what I can do. Alright, don't really know exactly what happened. Uh, for some reason, whenever I tried to just... make the time frame stretch, uh, my MacBook sometimes likes to zoom in completely on the chart, and I don't know how to get back. I really don't, I, I don't think I may have done it once. But anyway, let's go ahead and get back to these charts. I'm sure you heard sick of me rambling. Um, NZDJPY, again, um, we're still in uh, we're still in consolidation for um, target one, or target two and target three. Um, now, home, we're going to this uh, GPB odd. Now, notice there's quite a different ones, quite a different, quite a many, I guess you could say, uh, trades on here because they placed three throughout the week. Um, the first one here um, that they placed, uh, as you can see, went straight through and hit, you know, stop loss. Um, there was a second trade here and a third trade here. So this is one of the ones that I would have put. And this is just me how I would trade if I see multiple take profit levels. I like to place multiple trades. Um, that way, when I hit the take profit level, it it, it hits, um, and that way I can continue running my others and hopefully um, get to those take profit levels too. Um, the unfortunate thing about that kind of information or doing it that way is that if all three of yours hit take profit level or hit your stop loss levels, you lose three trades at once. Um, but I know that this is the way most traders do this because they are confident in their trades. And if you're going to be using a service like this, you want to be confident in their service. So this is why I'm trying to bring this information to you. Alright, so third trade that we had here was a Euro JPY. As you can see, they called this one around 7 o'clock in the morning. I don't want to say 6 o'clock in the morning, July 13th. Um, it was a negative 40 pips, and uh, it, again, I, I, to be honest, I, I do want to take a look at these on like a four hour time frame, just to take a look and see what the heck did they see that maybe I didn't see. And I'm, I'm geez, I'm losing every... Oh, they're so small in here I can't even tell because I'm wondering why you would even trade something like this on a four hour time frame or on it you know I mean you would get lucky to have that to bounce back down right that's such a strange strange 
place to trade. But it was a trade they called out. Uh, you know, it was a free service. If Hey, you know, hopefully uh, that, that trade got you somewhere. If not, I'm going to throw this back in on the 15 minutes. Um, just so we can take a look at it that way. And, uh, yeah, so as you can see, it just kind of, plummeted right through that that stop loss and that was their entry it didn't even have a chance at going positive um which i thought was very very odd so um <clears throat> that euro jpy was a sell at 1.1230 take profit one was 121130 take profit two was 120830 take profit three was 120330 um and of course there was not even a mention oh yeah they did mention that uh, the euro jpy um you know was a stop loss um next trade was the uh, gbp nzd uh looks like it's to be a little bit more promising um they did hit take profit one right which was about 32 pips they hit take profit two which is about 62 pips Take profit three. It looks like they are still working on. And uh, to be honest, and we scrunch this together and we go a little bit forward in the time frame, still working on it. Now, um, we will get to the third call later. And uh, But for now, let's just say, you know, you leave this trade as it is. Technically, it's still being worked on. Right? <clears throat> All right. So now. The uh, next call out they had was the Aussie dollar, um, and again, another one of those trades that you just wonder how they came up with this trade idea. If we take a look, at, I mean, I'll take a look at the eight hour maybe, and uh, of course, it's way up and over here. There is no real. Um, major resistance level we'll go to the four hour again no major resistance level um, it's just kind of a very odd you know trade to be placed in there um, so I'll zoom back into the uh, 15 minute because I feel like that's how they trade is off the 15 minutes um, but again, the take—I mean, the take profit, the risk to reward was was half, right? So, your your take profit level was at a 20 pip, you know, and you had a 40 pip stop loss. Again, this is one of those ones where if you give me a three, you know, TP1, TP2, TP3, I'm gonna place three trades in hopes that I hit all three. Um, if not, you know, you can always close out the one trade. But uh, I'm going to go by their direction, and uh, because they do give directions on to close positions and whatnot, and uh, we'll see what happens at the end. <clears throat> EuroCAD. Um, this one was actually a promising uh, trade. Um, let me see here. GPNZD, or was it the Aussie dollar? Where am I at here? Aussie dollar. Uh, okay. <clears throat> we are on to the EuroCAD. EuroCAD was a. Not multiple targets. They just had one target. So this is one that I had. Actually, you know what? Never mind. They had two trades on this one. And this was the first one that they had. Um, they entered at 1.5. Five four seven five zero. Um, Twenty minutes later, there was an alert that says "close now, setup failed," and obviously, um, they had a twenty-four pip stop loss. Luckily, it was twenty pips in whenever they called for the uh, they called for the the trade to close. And what's interesting is the take profit level. Take profit level is two hundred and seventy-five pips. Again, let's take a look at this at a four hour standpoint. And wonder it's right in here somewhere, I don't even know. Right there. I'm just wondering where the hell 
they even got this information. I'm looking like, I mean, I guess maybe that was it. Could, Because it's somewhere up here. Let's just draw a little horizontal line if we can. Because I can't even find it because it was so small. I just got rid of it. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Maybe that had something to do with it. They cut the top of that resistance. But it just went right through it. <clears throat> And uh, the second year old CAD will come later. So the next call they called was a, a GBP USD. And this was on July 14th. I won't even go to the four hour. I'll just go to the 15 minute again to try to find these because this is where I placed them. <laughs> and it looks like on the. They did hit take profit one. Um, it was getting it near take profit too and it just decided to turn around and go back the other way um, there was no direction whatsoever on this except for they let us know that it hit take profit one um, no instructions on whether to close out or not so I'm assuming they thought it was probably gonna get back in the um, um, you know maybe bounce around in the red zone hopefully come back out but it never did so I would have placed three trades on this I would have taken the profit and then if uh, I would have gotten no direction um, I the other two trades I would have uh, you know got lost on the uh, the stop loss right so um, that was the GPB USD the next trade is the let me see here. GBP USD. The next trade they had. Oh, they had. That was they had. They had another Euro CAD. So after they completely botched this experiment, um, this one right here that was 200 and some pips, and they only went 20 pips before they called it off. They went a little bit more of a conservative route, and uh, they had this call. So. Um, uh, you know, risk to reward was 1.37, not too bad. It you know it didn't really have too much drawdown, um, but it did hit its take profit level, so uh, which was 81 pips. Um, considering there was not multiple take profit levels, this one I would have put a 0.3 on, um, coming through as a signal group, um, and uh, see where that would have landed me. Um, now that we've gone through that. EuroCAD one. The next one they called was another GPB odd. Now this is where things start getting interesting because they already called this first one right that just completely bombed. Now they're calling a two tier or two different take profits of uh, GPB odd entering at 7.9910 take profit one is at 83350 and take profit two it actually says take profit one again, eight five six hundred. So let me shrink this down a little bit and show you what it's hoping to do. Let me take a look at this on a one hour chart. And so it looks like they're looking for like a swing trade here. And GPB odd has, if you have looked at the history of it, it looks like right around here it was going to take a swing. There were some people that took some bets right here, I know that. I actually placed bets down here um, and I did catch this I caught this going up and I think I want to say I forgot how many I want to say it was around uh, 100 pips or so before I got out which is yeah I think it was well no maybe a little bit higher I want to say it was like a right around here this plateau because once I saw it draw back I thought it may come back down but I remember this um, I saw this candle down here that told me this was probably a smart money move and I set it up to where it would it. I wicked one of these entries and I think I, I think it was about 200 pips and then uh, I was gonna see if it was, I was gonna let it run its course or see what was gonna happen so now it's coming back down and it looks like they tried to catch the swing move here 
completely botched that one and so now it looks like they're trying to catch another swing move so they gave quite a bit of room here for um, your stop loss right 111 pips um, and these are things that they don't tell you whenever they send out these signals they don't really give you an idea how many pips or you know you just kind of have to do it in your head and uh, but as a rule of thumb you know if I'm just trying to put some things together or for, for the sake of this experiment um, I'm just doing something simple um, so I have two two trades I'm gonna put a point two lot size on those right because if these do actually work out these are some good 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 wins I mean we have a 569 pip win here we have a 344 pip win here uh, and right now it's kind of flirting with this there's a third one but uh, you know right now we're in drawdown and we will get to the third one in a little bit um, next they threw out a GPB NZD a second one or maybe this was the first one oh yeah this is the the second one because I already talked about the first one because technically we are still in the first trade now um, if I see a call for a GPB NZD as a buy and uh, I see a stop loss that is less than their previous stop loss my additional thought process well if they think it's gonna get less than that um, and especially if they think it's gonna get more pips than what this currently is why would I not set this stop loss to this stop loss you know that way I'm risking less um, if that is the case then I would have gone out in all five of those trades because this one went directly to stop loss um, but there was no direction from from this uh, clean pips um, so we'll just say that we are still in this trade even though me as a trader probably would have moved this stop loss up and unfortunately I would be out of all five of those trades but for the sake of just for going through this experiment let's just say that we're still in this trade but we are now out of this trade and look at these ratios 0.72 these are not even two once you get to you know the the second and the third one yeah then you start getting to the ratio that you want but what I don't like about these are, are the first take profits are not the ratios that I want to be um, not even that so far a lot of them have been just taken straight to um, the stop loss uh, that was the GPB NZD so now next we have a uh, US CAD here is the first US CAD um, here is the entry this was a pretty smooth um, pretty smooth 47 pip win um, except for the pullback here um, personally as a trader if I would have seen this I would have entered again um, just to see that pull back and pull back just a little bit inside that my entry point I would have entered again but you know considering there was no direction from um, this uh, the service um, I would you know as a beginner trader I would have known what to do so I'm just gonna say I would have put a you know point three um, because there was not multiple tiers of take profit just one take profit put a point three on it and you know hope I hope it works out um, and this one actually had a pretty good ratio too um, what is that ratio there I really can't see uh, but it was a 3.62 alright so then after the USD CAD um, we have another GBP odd so now we are in our third GBP odd for the week it is a one um, uh, just just a uh, one target right and that target is 1.820 entry at 1.7960 stop loss at 7920 so the stop loss is actually less than this one um, and also the the target is less than the other two gargantuan ones here right so maybe what this one is designed to do is to actually get you to hit a take target 
right? Maybe they're thinking it's going to swing back down and then go back up and hit a take target and then continue on. So basically, I think what they've done here is they set you up for three different swing trades. Um, but unfortunately, you are running on even at this most recent one. And I put a, I put it around the time that, you know, I think they... Um, they, they sent out this so the GPB odd was about 334 in the morning I actually have it a little bit let me see if I can't move it over to the right time it actually probably would have been called around this time uh, yeah and unfortunately you're probably right around break even and actually, let me redo this. So the entry point for this GPU is 7960. Take profit was 8 to 8200s. And stop loss 7200. Okay, so yeah, you got a 40 point loss there. You're pretty much at break even, just a little bit under. But still, at the end of the week, you're in three GPB odds that are, you know, in the negative right and you've already lost one so what does this all boil down to well let's see if we can't bring up the numbers here so uh, I did a little spreadsheet here um, with all the different trades with the NZDJPY um, we hit take profit one it is still running GPB on the first one went straight to the stop loss you know we had the point one lot size three trades place um, and the, how I got all these numbers is I went to this pip calculator so you know this was um, if we are gonna get to one of those GPB odds um, to the take profit level of 344 pips at a point two you know pip size it's going to be you know 472 um, you know, it has all the different currencies. You can put in the pip amount. You can put in the lot size. So that's how I got all these different numbers and calculated all this up. So this one I'm looking at is the current, right? So if we if we placed all these trades as current and took directions from them as was, um, because some you know there were there was there they were still throwing in trades from last week, like there was um. A USD CAD from the previous leak that, that said 30 pips running break even. So that lets us know to put the you know the, uh, the stop loss at the break even. Um, there was really not a whole lot of that going on with this week, especially you know the um, the one I thought was the most odd was the um, the USD or sorry the GPB USD to where we had the. Uh, where we hit the TP1, and uh, they let us know we hit the TP1, but there was no direction after that, you know, whether to place the stop loss to, to break even. Um, and unfortunately, you know, if there's no direction on that, and these people are noobs, and they don't know what to do, um, you know, they can let that run directly to the ground, which is what happened. Um, two more trades went backwards, and they hit the stop loss. So, um, with all these numbers put together, what you would have gotten at the end of the week from this um, clean pips that claims to be 97% uh, effective, as you can see, they are not 97% effective. They had one, two, three, four, five trades out of the how many here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 13 trades, right? And they had one, two, three, four, five. Five out of 13 trades hit stop loss immediately. You had one that hit a stop loss after it hit a take profit. You had, I think maybe, you had this one that hit take profit still running. This one take profit still running. This one actually took profit. This one took profit. And then this one took profit. Or it's actually actually and that's these that's just a total. Um, so never mind. So you had a couple that were take profits, and uh, you still have five that are running, right? So what I did is I looked at the worst and best case scenarios. 
So let's go to the best case scenario. The best case scenario is all of those that are still running actually hit their take profit zones. Those GP odds that we were looking at, um, you know, you had, uh, and I feel like I'm missing one to be honest. Because one went directly down. Oh no, that's the last GPB odd. And we have this one with the GPB odd that's. I feel like that is wrong. I feel like we are. Let me go ahead and do this with you. Um, so that's 240 pip count of G GPP odd. And that would be at. Oh no, maybe that's right because it's at the 0 0.3 rate. So a GPB odd for 240 pip count at the point three because it was the lone one 493 uh 493 yep so that is correct so i did that one at a point three or uh or trades place three that's where i went backwards that's what's throwing me off it was actually a point three out of one because there was only one target um the point twos were a little bit different here at these gvp odds um, because there was only two trades placed, they were still in running. Um, let's just say both of those hit take profit. Let's just say everything that was running all hit their take profit zones, right? We add it all up. We and uh, the ones that already hit stop loss already hit stop loss. There's nothing we can do about that. And that's even you know I'm gonna even cons gonna consider the uh, GBP USD one. I'm gonna consider that one already down the drain. Um, there was no direction from from anybody about how to uh, you know reverse that you know if anything it could have broke even I might take that 78 off but let's just say for you know for all intensive purposes um, everything went well if everything went well you would actually have a total gain of nineteen hundred dollars and seventy three. Uh, is it nineteen hundred seventy three dollars and thirty nine cents, and that's with these respected lot sizes with these trades place, right? And same thing went for this one, right? So if in the current the current realm, you're actually down um, two hundred ten dollars, right? Um, now at the worst case scenario, um, let's just say everything that was still running went and hit the stop loss. You had everything that already had taken profit. You are down negative six hundred and three dollars, and so to be honest, you have some GPB odds that you're banking on, right? You are banking on these GPB odds to swing. Um, that's what they're throwing out there, and they're hoping that these GPB odds are uh, gonna make some money. And what's kind of deceiving about, you know, something like this is that they will, um, at the end of the week, you know, they will, um, here at the beginning of the week, they'll, they'll throw out a pip count and how many pips that they made, you know, and how many pips that they lost. And, you know, they'll say, you know, this one hit stop loss. And so you only lost, you know, 30 or something, 40, 30 or 40 pips. Well, the, the bad thing is, is that, or I wouldn't say the bad thing is, is that uh, the one thing that they fail to realize is that well, people place multiple trades. That's the whole point of getting multiple take profit levels, is to take to place multiple trades. You're not going to, you know, place one trade and take three three different profits. That's just, you know, that, how can you do that? So instead, you take three trades, right? Um, you take three trades. That way, you can take three different profits at the three different levels. Um, so to say that, you know, you only lost, you know, 40 pips, you know, off that trade is kind of distrustful and, uh, uh, you know, dishonest and, you know, so these are the kind of things you got to take into consideration whenever you get services like this. Um, and so if I had to rate clean pips um, myself, I would definitely give it about a C. Um probably a C minus. Um, there are some trades that they do have that, you know, are good, but 
to the honest to God truth. Sometimes when I look at these trades, I wonder how they get these setups, um, where they where they're getting these setups from, uh, what's their train of thought. You know, there's no analysis that comes with it. Um, it's just literally a copy and paste. You know, anybody could be doing it. Um, hey, some of the trades work, some of them don't. You know, and it's up to you to be a, a smart trader. Um, to probably do the research or at least know the the charts ahead of time. The way you can say, you know, I think this is going to be, you know, a USD CAD. Hey, I think it's probably going to be bullish today. And they send you, you know, a bearish signal. You know, a red flag might go off. And you might want to actually look at that chart and say, you know what, maybe I probably shouldn't take this trade. Because if you're just taking um, free signals, and uh, you're just going out there blindly taking them, um, that's how you can lose money really quickly. And uh, I don't want people to be losing money really quickly. Um, I want people to understand what they're doing. And just because it's a free signal um, doesn't mean it's a good signal. And that's probably the main thing I want to get across. Um, you know, you, you, the saying goes, you get what you pay for, right? Uh, if you're not paying for it, that's what you get. Um, it probably not going to be the best, but at least I thought I'd go through and show you this, um, yeah, at least for one week, show you that these trades from this service called clean pips, um, take a look at it. If you want, take a trade, if you want, um, the one thing that I think is a definitely con from them or is a, um, not con as in, you know, like a convict or anything like that but you know pros versus cons a con that they have is their risk to reward they do not have a good risk to reward um you know a lot of their stop losses are 40 60 pips um and sometimes you take the trade and it just blows right through those 40 or 50 pips and you would think a signal service hey i'm supposed to be making money off these things um, it just does the opposite. And the funny thing is, is that it's a free service. So they're not, it's not like they're taking money from anybody to give you these signals. You know, um, you'd feel like something like that might actually try to help for you. I don't know if, it, if it's just the, the process that I have going through my brain. You know, I'm going to try to provide somebody good signals. You know, that way I get a good reputation. That way in case... I can provide better signals, I have the opportunity to upcharge somebody. Um, or, you know, maybe a signal service if I'm just doing Forex, maybe I want to provide a signal service on indices and precious metals or, you know, oil or, you know, things like that, you know, gold, SPX, um, maybe I provide that as a separate service. And I'm not, if I'm doing good on a Forex service, then maybe I can charge for a different service. That's my train of, of, of thought of, you know, if I'm a professional trader and I'm throwing out signals, there's got to be a reason why. Um, but for these guys to just kind of throw out these random signals and, you know, as you could see, I, I want to go back to this actually really quick. Um, just look at these numbers on over here, these, these stop losses. How many hit stop loss? One, two, three, four, five, six more than half hit stop loss and they claim to be 97 percent in here i'll even i'll even bring that up for you too um bring back this obs let's go back to telegram There it is, right there. 97% winning accuracy. Do you enjoy our signal service? Think I should change that answer? If I can, I would, but it's not letting me change it because uh, you have 40. Well, look, there's not even that many people. I have 261 subscribers. So, not a whole lot of people, I guess, know about this. 
uh, but I'm going to bring it to your attention um, in case you do come across this. Maybe you have came across this, and maybe you were aware of this, and that's why you probably jumped out. Maybe you don't need me to listen. You don't need to be listening to me talking to you about this right now. I don't know. Um, but what I do know is that I do not like people out there losing money. Um, so I thought I'd bring this to everybody's attention if you're going to be trying to do services like this. Um, be aware of free services. Um, sometimes they're not the most free. Um, sometimes the best are actually the ones that are out there trying to um, <clears throat> get you to sign up for something. So, uh, uh, for example, you know, like I said, I've been uh, been doing Mr. Forex Wizard here and Indices Wizard. Um, this guy is really good. This guy is actually a guy I follow on. Um, Trading view. He's got some really good ideas. He doesn't really give signals, but he kind of gives you an idea. Hey, this is where I looked at this. This is what's happening. Um, this is where key levels you should, you know, be show. Um, this is probably the next one I'll do. I'll do Gold Cup by uh, Gold Cup I V I P. They say they say free signals. They say they say please share. Um, I haven't really went through and done a whole analysis of them. Um, Wyckoff trading. These, that's oh yeah, that's the Spanish channel. Um, there's another one. Nasdaq Masters. He will throw out a free signal every now and then. He actually has. See, here's his free signal he did right here. And uh, he got us, you know, seventy pip, seven hundred pips. So. Um, like I said, there are people with uh, decent signals out there, but I just wanted to bring clean pips to everybody's attention. Claiming 97% accuracy, as you can see, 50% of the trades were trash. You know, so <laughs> just be careful out there. Um, all right. Again, this is for educational purposes only. You know, I'm not a, not a wealth manager or anybody that... Uh, has the ability to tell you what you should and shouldn't do with your money. Um, just here to help people out. So, everybody, uh, do you have a good night? Thank you for, for listening.